I want to welcome everyone on behalf of the Walton County Board of Commissioners to our June uh, monthly commission meeting. We have three presentations tonight that will take place uh, prior to us opening the regular meeting. And at this time, I would like to call Ken Zidell up. We have a 4-H archery team that did very well in state that we want to recognize. So if Ken or one of his representatives would come up and tell us what they've done and what they've achieved, I think they're getting their act together right now. We have a very active 4-H in Walton County. Uh, thank you, Commissioner uh, Chairman Thompson, and you're right. Um, we do have a very active 4-H program, as you're very much aware of. And uh, my name is Michael Davis. I'm one of the program assistants for the program. We've got a lot going on. And uh, without our leadership that we have here with, with uh, Mr. Zidell and with Coach Galen Davis um, and others, um, we, we would not be able to provide the programs like we do provide. It's volunteers like them that mean so much to us, and um, we cannot thank them enough. And their their tireless work, and so because they don't get much pay, to say the least, none. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna turn it over to Galen to uh, tell you more about our teams. All right. First of all, thank you for taking the time to put us on your agenda. We do appreciate it, and we do appreciate all the support from the county. Um, so, to give you a little bit of history about the archery group, they've been together a little over five, six years. Um, as a group, they've won state titles more than once. <clears throat> they've won medals individually. Um, you know, we have, we have a strong program every year. You know, it's so good that we have to turn. Unfortunately, we had to limit how many kids we can take. You know, so that tells you that's a testament to how strong the program is. Um, you know, with me, I've got several of the coaches, um, Ken Zidell, Mandy Zidell, Daphne Williams. Um, and these four team members here just recently finished third place in the state for the compound FIDA event. And in the overall team event, they finish second in the state. So, you know, the, the team members, um, three of them finished well individually as well. Is it, but, you know, this is a team. Um, so, Douglas Colburn finished 10th in the state out of 90 archers. <coughs> Uh, Gabby finished 11th out of state in the state, and Jackson finished 12th in the state. Um, so, and Harrison Davis is another member of the team. So individually, they did very well. Because uh, 4-H is unique; they combine the the boys and the girls competing against each other. Very well. On behalf of the Walton County Board of Commissioners, we want to congratulate the team and. Uh, if y'all don't mind stepping up here in front of us for a quick photo, it would be great. Thank y'all. I, I do the paperwork. <laughs> Job well done. Thank you. Okay, John Oman, would you come up and let's recognize Cody for his outstanding achievement? Huh? Do they? No. He's on, he 
he's on his way. All right, we will rearrange 1.2 and 1.3 since he's on his way. Uh, and we have a great announcement. There's a newly formed Walton County Humane Society, and they're here today to make a presentation to this board. And, uh, you know, over the, at least while I've been here, there's been the tethering, there's been the animal uh, problem, and I'm happy to hear that we do have a humane society. And if y'all would come up and tell the board what you're thinking about and what you're wanting to look into and tell us about your organization. All right. Just start off with name and who you are, please. I'm Miranda Pariba. I'm Dee Dee Rosendahl. All right. Um, I've been a lifelong resident of Walton County with a deep passion for our community, both its animals and its people. Um, Dee Dee is also a Walton County resident and will be serving on our board of directors. Um, we came here tonight to present our newly formed nonprofit organization, the Humane Society of Walton County. This Humane Society is currently being funded by a local family to get it up and running. Our main request is for the commission to allow the county manager to explore the possibility of us taking over the kennel operations at the current Walton County Animal Control Building until we can construct our own state-of-the-art facility, which is estimated to take about two years to complete. I wanted to share with you some immediate benefits we can bring to the county. We estimate we will save the county over $200,000 per year. We will also put an immediate end to all unnecessary and inhumane euthanasia practices. Additionally, we have plans to promote positive pet ownership and educate the community. We bring to the table extensive experience in networking, fundraising, marketing, and a strong, strong commitment to volunteerism. Our facility will be open daily for operations, including Saturdays and Sundays, and our primary focus will always be the well-being of the animals in our county. Um, about 20 years ago, I visited the Walton County Animal Shelter with my mom. Our purpose was to rescue a beautiful black standard poodle named Blue from our local shelter with a high kill rate. <coughs> Even now, I vividly remember how closed off the shelter was to the public, almost as if it was kept secret. Unfortunately, not much has changed since then. We would like to change the experience when visiting the animal shelter to a positive one. We have an opportunity to shape the future generation through the Humane Society of Walton County. Perfectly healthy dogs and cats are still being euthanized today, and currently the responsibility of finding homes for these animals falls upon private citizens rather than shelter staff. We need a fresh approach. We must have a new image to inspire the public and help the animals. Walton County Animal Control needs our help. In 1971, a Walton County Humane Society was started by Jim Kidd, Francis Enslin, and Paul Verner. It was incorporated until 2001. We have tried to locate more information and have found that all three founders have since passed away. We have picked up the torch they left and are ready to continue their efforts. These animals desperately need us. With the support of the Walton County Commission, we can make a significant difference in improving their conditions and future prospects. We firmly believe that our Humane Society is the solution to these problems. We are eager to enter into an agreement with the county and commit to a substantial reduction in euthanasia rates and an increase in successful adoptions. This is why I implore you for your assistance and support for the Humane Society of Walton County. Our website is going live tonight. It is humanewalton.org, and it is still under construction, but if you're inspired to make a difference, please consider making a donation to help us continue our efforts. Thank you in advance for your support. Okay, thank you. Does the board have any questions? They're <coughs> proposing <coughs> to Walton County for us to go and look at some other counties that have coordinated with humane societies to actually take over the kennel operations. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And Walton County is still be in charge of the enforcement uh, in an effort to place more animals uh, in the private sector. Uh, it's my understanding that they're offering 
uh, a tour of facilities in other counties for those commissioners that would like to go see what's going on and look at this option down the road. I just need direction from the board if that's uh, something that we want to look into. Um, uh, we set up a, a trip to go look at county's operations that have morphed into this and uh, they're offering to build a facility to actually house and kennel uh, animals that we take in. Uh, there's a lot of details still questions that from a government standpoint that we would have like an injured dog or one that's uh, supposedly got rabies or stuff like that who would be responsible on that. That would have to be worked out. But uh, I need direction from the board if we want to look into this further or uh, I think it'd be a good idea to move forward with the process and at least look into it further. Any other comments from the board? I agree with Commissioner Bradford. Okay. Uh, well, we will get with uh, John and get with you commissioners, and I think they've volunteered to set up a an excursion to one of these counties for those that want to go and see what's going on. And I would love for our head of animal control to go and ask the hard questions and and uh, look at what other counties are doing. Um, we by no means have all the answers to any of our departments. And uh, if we can improve and come out better for the animals and come out better for the public. I'm all in favor of it too. So uh, we will get with John, coordinate with the commissioners that would like to go see what's going on in some of these other counties and uh, start the process. Thank you for your thank time. Thank you very much. All right, thank you all. I would like to tell all you right. I appreciate personally them taking the time and the resources to do what they're doing. That means a lot. Appreciate it very much. It really does. Thank y'all. Okay, John is is <clears throat> our wardee here. Is the hailstorm getting? We we had hail hitting the window just a few minutes ago. Now this is this is the smallest worker we got, folks. Y'all don't laugh at him because he's so small, but. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> he said there was nickel size hail out there that held him had him held up in <laughs> well we appreciate uh, this opportunity to recognize uh cody and and anytime we get a chance to brag on our employees you know we really uh, appreciate that. Um, Cody, uh, seven years he's been with Public Works and through hard work and a lot of uh, determination, he's moved quickly through our ranks as an equipment operator and really honed his skills as an operator. Um, he currently supervises one of our util one of our crews, the utility crew. Um, but here recently, Cody decided to represent Walton County in the Georgia chapter of the American Public Works Association's Equipment Rodeo. Uh, this event was hosted by Caterpillar. It was held in their at their training facility in Missoula, Georgia, on May 17th. And Cody chose the uh, the mini excavator. If you're not familiar, it's a like a backhoe on tracks. Um, so uh, that was the the piece of equipment he chose. And um, this event consisted of several tasks that you had to completely perform. And the winner was the the person with the quickest time. So um, we got a little video here to show you that that will be a whole lot better than me trying to explain what what he did. So let me see if I can pull this up. He 
it kind of makes this look easy. This was with no warm up, no practice run. It was just get on it and go. Now this had to be oriented with the red line to to the operator there. So uh, if you see that red line there, that's there was only one way it'd go in there. Easy. <clears throat> I think they. The, only idle speed, so everybody had the same. They wouldn't let you idle it up. You probably could have done it quicker. This might have been the toughest. That, was a, that wasn't a very big hole, was it, Cody? It got a little tougher as you go along. But that, uh, he kind of made that look easy. Uh, it's a lot harder than it looks, when, especially when a lot of people are standing around watching you. Um, he, he competed against 20 other operators from uh, Public Works uh, all the way across the state of Georgia. So, uh, but that uh, that completely flawless two minute and 14 second performance earned Cody uh, first place in the state, a hundred dollar prize money, and an all expense paid trip to San Diego, California, that'll be held in August, and he'll be representing the state of Georgia at the. APWA, the American Public Works Association's National Equipment Rodeo. So if you would, join us and congratulate <laughs> Cody, there'll be electric equipment in California. They don't allow these. <laughs> He's not kidding. <laughs> Yes, ma'am, please. Thank y'all. Come up here and let's get a picture, Cody. <laughs> get in the middle. There you go. If everyone would stand, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance and then have an remain standing for the invocation. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this 
much needed rain that we needed very badly. Please watch over us tonight and help us to make the right decisions for the county. Please be with everyone here tonight as they leave and keep them safe. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Okay, I'll call our meeting to order and indicate the roll call, which visually we have everyone present. Uh, you've had a chance to review the agenda. Are there any additions or deletions you want to add to the agenda? If not, I entertain a motion that we adopt the agenda. So moved. Got a motion? Second. Got a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Passes unanimous. Sharna, you're up. Planning Commission recommendations. I got to get the first one. Hold on. All right, um, this is the Planning Commission's recommendation approval of land use 2303-0021 and zoning 2303-0022, land use change from suburban to neighborhood residential and rezone 8.05 acres from A1 and B1 to B2 for an equine surgical center with a variance to reduce the buffer from 100 foot to 50. The applicant and owner is A10 Properties, LLC, properties located at 3395 and 3435 Mahan Road and New Jersey Road. This is in District 3. Um, this was represented by um, Andrea Gray, and they just want to change the land use. And there's already a veterinarian clinic there. The property beside of it will be um, used for a surgical center. There was no... Um, opposition and the Planning Commission recommended approval. Unanimous. Okay, thank you. I will open a public hearing on this application and if the applicant or his representative or their representative would please come forward and uh, tell the board what you want to do. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. I'm Andrea Gray. It's nice to see you um, this evening. Um, tonight, I have the pleasure of representing A10 Properties, which does business, as you know, as um, Countryside Veterinary Services. Um, tonight, they're requesting a rezoning on two parcels from A1B2 to B2 to accommodate their existing veterinary services um, in addition to a new equine <coughs> surgery center and barn. Um, as Ms. Sharna just showed you, the properties are located at the intersection of Youth Jersey Road and Mahan Road, just um, north of Jersey. Here's a little close, um, closer view. Um, the 5.95 acres is where the existing veterinary service uh, clinic is located. Again, the one that's been there, gosh, for at least 30 years now. Um, the 2.1 acres was recently acquired by ATN Properties uh, for purposes of expanding their services. The proposed uses, again, the 5.95 acres would stay the same. Uh, we're requesting the rezoning to make it consistent with the adjoining property and to be consistent with the most recent um, zoning ordinances. On the 2.1 acre property, it was formerly used by a uh, commercial landscaping company, so there's an existing commercial building on that property that would be renovated to be the surgical center, and then um, next to it would be a 3,000 square foot barn to accommodate the horses coming and going uh, from that surgery center. 
here's the site plan, and that's why I handed this out to you because it's difficult to see um, the details of it on the screen, so I've handed that out um, as well. Uh, but here you can see the triangular shape of the property, and starting from the south, you see the, the existing veterinary center. So nothing is changing on that property. That will remain the same. Uh, moving north to the 2.1 acres, um, you can see the existing building there that will be retrofitted. For the surgery center, um, you see some blue areas, which will be um, the, the parking areas. Um, there is more than adequate parking on both sites. Um, and you see in, I guess, pink, purple-ish there, um, the uh, 3,000 square foot barn. Um, as Sharna mentioned, we are requesting a variance on the transitional buffer. Um, you'll see because of the triangular shape of the property, if we were to do the 100-foot buffer, it would cut into that existing building. Not sure how they got that zone before, but that's beside the matter. Um, you can see, though, that you know, even in reducing that, 50, that buffer down to 50 feet, um, it's a heavily wooded buffer in that area. Um, the closest home to this um, site is about 500 feet away. So we don't anticipate any undue impacts to the adjoining property owners. Um, and again, and that is necessary to be able to develop the site. So again, our request is to rezone both properties from A1, B2 to B2. Uh, we would require a change in the character area from suburban to neighborhood residential. And this fits squarely within that, given that it's a, a commercial use that supports the surrounding community and has done that since um, at least the early 90s that I remember. Um, the variance, again, is to reduce the 100-foot transitional buffer to 50 feet, and um, that's based on the hardship of the lot um, size and the triangular shape of it. So with that, I'd be happy to answer um, any questions that you may have or show you more cute pictures of dogs and cats. Okay, any questions from the board? Thank you, Andrea. Is there anyone else here in support? of this application that would like to speak? Is there anyone here in opposition to this application that would like to come forward and speak? Well, seeing none, I will uh, close the public hearing on this and ask the boards to uh, make a recommendation. I make a motion to approve this zoning. Second. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Any further discussion, questions? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimous. Okay, Sharna. Um, you've got four two and four three. Uh, we will vote on those separately, but we're going to have one public Yes, sir. Just hearing a public hearing for both as well. For both of those. Right. The um, 4.2 is approval of land use change 23030032. Wants to change from conservation to highway corridor. The applicant is Harvest Recycling LLC. The owner, um, Golden Monroe LLC, property located on Highway 78. This is in District 4. <clears throat> Along with that land use will be a rezone. Um, and conditional use, rezone 27.42 acres to M2 and 73.70 acres to A1 with a conditional use for a compost facility and a solid waste transfer station. The applicant is Harvest Recycling LLC. The owner is Golden Monroe LLC, property again located on Highway 78 and District 4. <laughs> This, um, the application was represented by the Garrett family, um, Katie, Simon, and Eli, and they explained what they wanted to do um, as far as the transfer station, the composting. Um, there were objections to the application, you know, um, traffic, noise, and um, I'm sure that they're here tonight to let you know what those concerns were. What the was Planning the Commission did recommend approval with conditions. Okay. All right. Uh, we will open public hearing on uh, four two and four three, and ask the applicant to please come forward and present the owner's <coughs> case.
right. Well, hello again. <laughs> this evening, I also have the um, pleasure of representing Harvest Recycling LLC, which is the Garrett family, and they have joined me here tonight in the request uh, for approval of a recycling materials recovery, composting, and solid waste transfer facility. I'm going to give you a brief overview of our request, and then Simon Garrett is going to talk about the company and what activities will happen on the site, and then I'll wrap it up with a public interest review. So as Ms. Sharna said, our request um, involves two different tax parcels. Um, they front on Highway 78, and they're immediately adjacent to the Walton C&D landfill and the Carruthers Mill C&D landfill. And total, they total about 101 acres. And so what my client is doing is combining those two parcels and then re-subdividing them into a 27.42 acre parcel that we're requesting be rezoned to M2, and that will be where the center of the um, business is operated. And then we're asking that the remaining 73.7 acres be rezoned to A1 to serve as a buffer around the operations. In addition to the rezoning, we're also asking for two conditional use permits one for the compost facility and one for the solid waste transfer building. And then we will also require a change in the character area from conservation to highway corridor. Here is a uh, depiction of the, the concept plan and I'm gonna let Simon, who is behind me, um, talk to you about that. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for your time this evening, uh, reviewing our request. We appreciate your time and consideration. As Andrea said, I'm Simon Garrett and I wanna just say a few words about Harvest Recycling. We're a family business uh, that consists of my siblings and myself. There's four of us, and uh, we got our start in the waste industry back in the mid-90s when we formed roll-off systems together with our parents. And uh, we're, we're here today requesting uh, approval for Harvest Recycling. Um, we're a green company focused on conservation and stewardship of discarded materials that are otherwise destined for disposal at the landfill. And our goal is to minimize the amount of materials that go to the landfill. Um, we want to be a local and convenient drop-off destination for citizens and businesses in the community. Uh, we want to better manage their materials to harvest uh, any recyclable materials that we can that would otherwise go to the landfill. Um, we want to be a one-stop shop that can handle their most common needs, whatever people have. We don't want to have to turn people away and say, oh, we can't take that unless it's something hazardous. We don't want to take anything hazardous, but anything that their common needs, we want to be able to take it. Um, and we employ a sustainable operating model. Um, materials would come to our site, we will process them, and then we will ship them back out. Uh, this is not a landfill where materials would come to stay and live the rest of their life to, to be there forever. This is a sustainable operating model. Materials come in, we process them, they go back out. It happens over and over again. It's, this is not like the landfill where materials come and stay and the landfill is dying every day. This is a sustainable business, a sustainable model. Um, so you, you're probably wondering how we do that. Uh, there's four ways that we do that. That's recycling, composting, material recovery, and waste transfer. So what are we recycling? Uh, we're recycling cardboard, concrete, sheetrock, scrap metal, wood, and green waste. What are we composting? We're composting dirt and roots from stumps, and we're composting leaves and grass clippings. Um, what is material recovery, you might be wondering. Material recovery is the process by which we separate. If we get a load in, a load of materials that's mixed together and say we've got some recyclable materials and some non-recyclable materials, and we want to harvest off what we can that are recyclable, Material recovery is the process by which we separate that and we get the materials that we can recycle. And what we can't goes to the landfill for proper disposal. And then waste transfer. Waste transfer is simply a relief valve so that if we get materials in, loads in that don't have any recyclable value, nothing that we can recycle, we've got an outlet for them so we can send those materials to the proper landfill. And this enables us to be able to accommodate any of our customers' needs that come in with any kind of solid waste material. Um, that's kind of the quick 40,000 view. If there's questions that you guys have, I'd be happy to entertain those at the appropriate time. And I think Andrea's got some additional comments. Thank you, Simon. I'm going to review with you the, the mitigation measures that my client is going to put in place um, to ensure that the surrounding property owners are properly protected um, from the development. First, uh, with regard to visual impacts, 
Um, the site itself is about 2,000 feet off of Highway 78, so it will not be visible off of Highway 78. Um, to the north, there's a substantial approximately 1,900 feet between the operations and the nearest house on Treadmill Bridge Road, and that is a heavily, heavily wooded buffer, so it will not be visible from those homes. On the western boundary, again, a heavily wooded boundary, um, approximately um, 800 feet between the property line and the nearest house, um, and over you know, 1,700 feet from the actual operation site to that home. So uh, visibility for this will be isolated to the existing C&D landfill, which is across the street. Uh, mitigation of noise impact. So again, the buffers are key here. There are substantial buffers. They're heavily wooded. But in addition to that, my client, of course, will comply with the Walton County Noise Ordinance, which requires that the sound at the property line be no higher than 50, 50 decibels. So we will absolutely comply with those um, requirements and adjust our site operations accordingly. The applicant is also willing to limit the hours of operation, which will limit the hours of noise, um, to 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday, Monday through Saturday, so there will be no noise in the evenings and none on Sunday. Um, mitigation of odor. Once again, buffers. The buffers are huge, uh, extensive, and wooded. Um, in addition to the buffers, um, site operations are key to maintaining low odors. Um, first of all, my client will make sure that um, the solid waste is sorted indoors. There are three-sided buildings, and that's where that activity will occur. Um, as uh, Mr. Garrett stated, the, the waste does not stay there. It's not a landfill, so it's constantly cycled in and out. It's constantly on the move, um, and daily cleanings will be um, in accordance with EPD regulations. Um, in addition to that, my client is also willing to add as a condition to the zoning that if the county determines that the odors at the 101-acre property line are um, not acceptable, then they can require my client to install a fragrance mist system within those solid waste transfer buildings. So that would be within the discretion of the county to monitor that and to request that. Um, traffic volumes, we're anticipating about 50 customers a day to start. Um, and hopefully ramping up to 150 to 200 over a three to five year period. Um, this is a very low traffic volume, particularly compared to say a, a gas station or a Dollar General, um, and also given the fact that it's on a four lane divided state highway. So again, when you're balancing the impacts to adjacent property owners and the benefits um, to the county, this, this site really achieves that balance. This is a much needed service for our county. Waste is reality. Nobody likes to talk about it. Nobody likes to think about it. But it's something that we absolutely have to deal with. There is no better site in this county for this, for this operation. It's directly next to an existing landfill. Extra measures are being put in place by my client to make sure that any impacts are mitigated as we just went through. My client is absolutely willing to accept all the conditions that the Planning Commission recommended on the 27.42 acres. And they're also willing to accept the conditions with a slight wording modification on the 73.7 acres. Mm -hmm. And then again, they're willing to add an additional condition with regard to the odor to give the <coughs> county um, discretion as to whether or not to require an fragrance mist system within the solid waste transfer buildings. I'm sorry that this is hard to see, which is why I gave you the handout. Here's a summary um, of our request for you this evening on each of the parcels. The 27.42 acres, again, we're asking for a rezoning to M2, and then we're willing to um, accept all five of the conditions recommended by the Planning Commission, which was a limit on the operation hours, um, no grinding or crushing um, outside of normal business hours, all solid waste to be stored and sorted in enclosed structures, no solid waste to be stored outside of the enclosed structure, and then if any adjustments are made to add buildings to the site plan, that would require additional approval from the planning department. And then again, the additional condition we're willing to tack on regarding the, the odor um, to be monitored by the county. And in addition to that zoning with those conditions, we're also again asking for conditional use permits, for the compost facility and the solid waste transfer building. And then again, a change in the character area from conservation to highway corridor. And then finally, on the 73.7 acre parcel, again, we're asking for a rezone there um, from A1, R1, B2 to A1 to act as a natural buffer uh, protecting the property owners in the area um, around the site. And the modified condition that we would request is that the 73.1 acre 
um, that is to remain A1, shall be established as a buffer for noise reduction and visible screening for the transfer station. No timber harvesting or clearing shall occur on the western or northern portions of the property which are wooded. And with that, we are happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Does the board have any questions at this time? I have one question. Okay. The condition on the 73.7, the word perpetual is taken out. What's the purpose of that? Right. So the word perpetual is usually related to a deed restriction. And so given that this is a zoning, um, that didn't make a lot of sense to us. So it wouldn't be for forever? Well, it would be as long as the, the zoning were in place. So in order to change the condition, like any zoning you do, they'd have to file an application and come back before the Planning Commission and the Board of Commissioners <clears throat> to get that changed. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay, hearing none at this point, I'll ask y'all to please sit down. Is there anyone else here in favor of this application that would like to make a statement? Okay, seeing none, we will open it up for those in opposition here. Uh, and if you would, uh, please state your name and where you live and try not to repeat the same concerns over and over, but we will open it up for those in opposition to come forward and tell us their concerns. Good evening, commissioners, uh, chairman, members of the community. Thank you all for being here. My name is Ed Lehman. I'm the HOA president for uh, Bradley Gin subdivision. We're located approximately a quarter mile off of Highway 78 on Bradley Gin Road. We're a community of 65 homes with 130 Walton County residents, voters, and taxpayers. We as a community are located approximately one mile from the CND landfill on Highway 78. We have endured the stench of sulfur from this landfill for many years and are at the end of our ropes with dealing with this. Nothing has been over the years to curtail this odor, the noise of trucks, bulldozers, horns, buzzers, machinery, etc. This has all been magnified as the mountain of trash grows taller and taller. It has now come before you to allow Harvest for Socking to rezone the area adjacent to the landfill. They wish to build a transfer station to process solid waste, household garbage, and all of the other items they are talking about. This facility will be located directly behind the newly renovated Senior Living Center. And I wonder if the new owners of this senior center would want to be run out of business, business when their tenants leave because the eye sore, the ear sore, and the nose sore. Notwithstanding the additional noise of grinders, sorters, trucks, backup warning buzzers, engine noise, loaders, garbage trucks, and moving equipment, we will be faced with the added repugnant stench of household garbage as well, being dumped out, sorted, reloaded onto another truck just to repeat the noisy and wretched stench-filled process all over again and again, day after day. These heavy vehicles will also add to an already dangerous section of Highway 78, with large trucks slowly entering and exiting a fast-moving highway with no cross-through to their entrance, so they will have to go any U-turn right in front of Bradley Gen Road to come back up the road. As Mount Kevin Little, this is what I've heard the mountain at C&D Landfill called, so does the odor, environmental impact, impact <laughs> and buzzards. With this happening, we, the citizens of East Walton County, are losing our right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness by having to live with this day after day. Many have referred to the Highway 78 corridor from Oconee County as the gateway to Walton. Unfortunately, with the growing mountain of debris, additional landfill available in the area, and now the possibility of a transfer station, it now reflects to everyone that enters Walton County that this is the place to dump your trash. Walton County is a dump. You as our commissioners can change the legacy that was started by others to make Walton County the premier county to live and grow our families. Make a new legacy for yourselves. Please do not continue down the path of allowing this type of industry in Walton County. Here are a few questions that would need to be answered in my opinion. Has an environmental impact study been done at existing facilities like this? Have any of you visited an existing facility firsthand? Has there been an environmental study done at existing C&D landfill? Has the EPA ever been involved with this company? 
does the EPA need to be notified about this proposed facility and investigate what effect it would have on the state watersheds and the Appalachian River system? Have any of these questions been asked or addressed? I have a petition signed by more than 130 concerned citizens against this proposed facility. In closing, please keep Walton beautiful and deny this rezone and furthermore, deny any company that wants to make Walton County their own personal dump. Thank you. Thank you very much. Here's the petition. Give it to the clerk. She'll file it with a... Good evening. My name's Donnie Mueller. I live on Treble Bridge Road directly behind these landfills. And uh, a lot of the people here tonight are people from the community. Um, I wrote some notes. Um, basically, who am I? <laughs> I'll tell you who I am. I, I bought my property in 1995 from Mr. Thompson. We built our house in 96. So we've been there 27 years, six years, over six years before the landfills started. Um, these landfills have continually grown. Um, there, this is a family community. There's a, I've gotten to know a lot of these people in this community. I got families, I got friends. We moved to this area to build our house, to start our family and raise our children. And that's what we've done, just like a lot of these people right here. And um, we've done, done that. So we've been there way before these landfills even became an issue. Um, we did attend these planning meetings. We went to the planning and zoning. I have an issue with that. As soon as the planning zone, we, we brought our grievances and the second the meeting was over, one of the gentlemen raises a vote and, and it was already typed out, ready to go. There was like no discussion about this and the amount of time that we've had to get to people that most people didn't even know what was going on because they don't directly join this landfill. We've had to try to get the word out ourselves. I also ask one thing, if there's any commissioner that if this landfill goes through, if you or your family or anybody's gonna directly benefit from it, would you be willing to recuse yourself from this vote and not participate? Because I don't feel like that's in the best interest of the community. This next thing, the, which I know we all talk about it, the noise, the odor, it's grown. They can, the buffers that we talk, they're talking about, obviously they don't work because you get complaints about it all the time. We have odor issues, we have noise issues, and I don't care what you say, a solid waste, and that's the word that keeps getting issued, missed in a lot of this, it's solid waste is household garbage that's fixing to come over to be recycled. And it's just, it's gonna smell. Um, I don't feel, after talking to a lot of our community, I've been, I've been out talking and meeting a lot of my, I've met a lot of people, neighbors that I haven't even known that we've met, but the ones that know best, I don't feel from the ones I've talked to that knew about this, that the intentions were honest. It was misleading a little bit because people didn't realize that what this was gonna be. They just hear the word recycle and not that, hey, we're just gonna have a solid waste transfer station and they don't understand what that means. I feel like that was a little bit misleading in that. Next, uh, to add to the petitions, I have, I have 25 people on, on a petition, and I also received an email tonight from the retirement home. The uh, retirement home uh, is owned by Mandy and Ryan uh, Moburn. There is assisted living. Uh, these pay, they have invested over $3 million in this facility to um, accommodate and assist, assist living. They're a family-owned business. Right now, there are 25 residents that are already there with expected capacity of 55 with 19 employees, and they also strongly oppose this. Um, I have a question about the additional, on y'all's paperwork here, any additional buildings that go in if this goes through, it says it goes to the planning and developing. Does it not come back before you also? I mean, we don't, this can't keep, just grow out of control. Closing, uh, I guess to say, this, we, we moved here 27 years ago and Walton County is our home. Walton County is a lot of these people's home right here. Um, you're gonna displace, you know, you're, you're putting this interest with this transfer station above the community. 
if you do this, this retirement home, people that have invested in this, you're going to choose this business over that business because it's going to run them out of business. Nobody's going to want to bring their loved ones out there and leave them at a place that's right next to this with the noise and everything. I don't care how much buffers you try to get, it's going to come through. The noise comes through the woods. We, uh, the odor comes through the wood. Right now, the odor might not be so bad because it's been nice and it's sunny. But when it's raining and it's humidity, it spreads out throughout this whole community. And I don't see the point of um, rewarding th these landfills. They're, they're talking about odor disbursement. Why haven't we done that already on the landfills that are there? I mean, now we're going to do it because we want this. So are you going to reward them for mismanaging and not taking care of. I mean, <clears throat> my opinion, they, it hasn't been being good neighbors to us in the community. We all live there. This is our families. This is our home. And thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody, board members. My name is John Thompson. I live on Bradley Gen Road, further back, about four miles from the current landfill. I just had a question. Um, the question was basically, what kind of trash is going to be brought in or debris is going to be brought in from other counties to our county uh, by this business? Uh, are they going to just allow Walton County people to bring stuff to that facility, or is it going to be other counties as well, other communities? Um, all that's going to come into our county. So that's the only thing I had to say. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good evening, I'm Robbie Chris. I live uh, on Cheek Road. I'm 1.9 miles from this. Uh, a lot of the stuff that's already been said, uh, I won't repeat, but uh, I will reiterate uh, on the smell. At 1.9 miles, and I've lived on Cheek Road be 20 years, at the end of Cheek Road, I'll be 20 years in October, and the smell from those two out there are awful. Not to mention the growing mountain that has occurred. You can, you can watch it over time coming down 78 when you're, when you're headed on 78 towards Cheek Road. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And not to mention all the trucks and all the dust. And when I'm coming home, either from Monroe or from Athens, I get behind all these trucks, I have all this stuff blowing off. I get sand, I get dust, and you can see it when, the, when it's windy out. You can see the dusty conditions. But just, uh, I'd like to, you know, that gentleman said he's four miles away. I hope he, I don't know if he smells it or not, but I can tell you at 1.9, you smell what's there now. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, gentlemen and ladies in the community. My name is Mark Kane, and I reside over in Good Hope. Uh, just a couple major concerns that haven't been discussed is what, what trash is being brought outside the county that's not Walton County trash. The second part is I've never heard anything talked about if there was a fire at the dump, how, how would our current firefighters fight it? Most of them are volunteers. We got one guy at one station. There's no way this county, if, that, if either one of those dumps caught on fire today, how's the county going to fight that? Excuse me, I'm going to correct you there. I've just hired over the last two and a half years 24 new firemen, and every station is fully staffed, and we have no volunteers. Okay. But, but to the point. I mean, State facts, but Understand. state accurate facts, please. Understand, Mr. Thompson, but what would the county do to, to fight a fire in the dump today? What, what would protect the We, we had a uh, C&D fire in the city of Monroe on the Holder landfill, and the EPD and the state got involved, and it took a while to extinguish it. It was, it's out on Vine Street, if mm -hmm. you know where that was at. It burned for three months right. before they got it put out. But, but hopefully the county has studied that because the homeowners are at risk if either one of those recycling centers caught on fire. So that, I, I think the, the county owns it to the citizens to make that study before a determination is made. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. 
Good evening, Commission. My name is Adam Kirk. I'm a Bradley Gen Subdivision. I, my largest concern with this, and I, I spoke about this at a previous uh, rezoning that was held, is in regards to traffic and the safety of entering and exiting Bradley Gen Road on the 78. I know that Highway 78 is a state highway, so y'all can't govern what happens on that highway, but y'all can, uh, can support it. Y'all can push to have something done with a desail lane or something added. We, we have an application in the DOT. They have approved quick response for Bradley Gen Road. Perfect. It's in an engineering process. That came up about a year and a half ago when the many warehouses mm -hmm. came there. And I immediately met with DOT. They're very slow though. But we do have a positive response from them on a desail lane for Bradley Gen. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. You didn't know that, did you, Lee? I know you work diligently <laughs> every day for the county, I'm sure, sir. Good evening, commissioners. I'm, my name is Alex Ramsey. I live in Bradley Gin Subdivision. One thing that I haven't heard anybody talk about is the amount of trash that gets blown off of these trucks as they pass up and down 78. Has anybody looked at, you know, fixing that problem as well? You know, we talk about Mount Monroe being growing and uh, the smell and all the negative impacts, but we're polluting our roadside each and every time one of these trucks come up and down the road. Do you think that moving household garbage or any other recyclable is going to be anything better? What about those type of uh, debris that gets on the road? I drive a motorcycle. I'm putting my life at risk each and every time I ride up and down the road. It's a risk I'm willing to take, but I don't think I should be risking my life uh, because of a careless truck driver that doesn't have his load tarped or secured. Thank you. All right, thank you, sir. <laughs> okay, is there anyone else? We've covered a vast array of, uh, and uh, we'll be giving the applicant a chance to come up. And I would like to make a statement. I have went to three different transfer stations and toured them, because uh, I didn't know what a transfer station was myself. So to the uh, uh, homeowners association leader, I've check the list off. You were spot on with your questions and my questions. Um, a lot of comments is made tonight about the existing landfills. I've smelt the smell, and we all have. They're there. They were permitted by previous administration, and unfortunately, there's one across the road from these two. When they get full, it's larger than the other two put together. So there will be a C and D landfill on 78 for many, many years to come. Um, the county did that back in 2003. So um, that, unfortunately, is going to be an ongoing issue for years to come. But um, I just wanted to make that statement. Now, is anyone else here? I want to make sure everybody in opposition has a chance to have their say. We've we've covered the whole gamut. If you want to come back, you're welcome, sir. At least in the speaker, because we are trying to record this. A lot of people can't get out, and they like to watch our meetings. One last thing is it states solid waste should be stored and sorted in an enclosed structure. Three sides is not enclosed. 
All right. Thank you. Okay, anyone else in opposition, please come forward. I'm sorry? No, you're being a citizen. You have a right to have your say. I've been emailing most of y'all all for two weeks. My name is Laura Prescott. I live on Bradley Gin, directly across from um, the Hodges Junkyard that recently has been pretty much completely cleaned up. Um, the reason we're here and speaking to you is major concerns about our community. When you're elected, your decision should be made to help ensure that all communities in this county are protected so that we may live in a safe, clean environment and maintain lifestyle chose that we chose to live in this community for. When issues such as this come up, I would hope you would think, would I allow and vote for this to happen in my backyard? I would think it is not to protect, it is to protect your families and your lifestyle. Part of your job to protect communities for such things as this. This will reduce our property values and the ability to enjoy our homes and yards. I know on Bradley Gen, from where I am all the way down, there's eight swimming pools. There's eight what? Swimming pools. Thank you. That we use on a regular basis. So that's going to, any issues with odor and things are going to take that away from us. We chose this area because of what it has to offer. What is being proposed would completely alter and ruin everything we have worked for. We chose to come to Walton County because we were in Gwinnett County. Everyone here knows what has happened to Gwinnett County, and that's not what we want to happen to Walton County. The smell and, tra <coughs> the smell and trash would in no way have a positive impact on us. This is not something miles from us, but right in the backyard of families. Would you really want this going on in your personal backyard? We already have times when there are odors present from the other dump that is a couple of miles away. Those odors and pollution are nothing compared to this and will be in our backyards. This disruption to wildlife in the area would be great. The changes would bring rodents and unwanted vermin in. After researching this, I have also been told that the impact on birds, the bird population is a concern when you bring something in like this. There are also two creeks running through this area along with the river. Polluting this area is not okay. If anyone here thinks this has, would have a positive impact, please speak up and help us understand how. Our taxes over the last two years have gone up $1,000. That tells me you think this area has a lot of value. Why would you want to change that? This would drastically reduce home values that currently run up and over a million dollars in that area. Most of us has been out here at least 20 years. There are numerous large plots that are family land. This should be a community decision. I hope that you will look at this decision as what's best for a community and not a corporation trying to disrupt our lives and ruin a community. I understand all of your decisions cannot be made based on personal preference, but this decision affects the people that elected you you would be ruining a community that is populated with hundreds of people. Thank you. Laura, mm -hmm. you sent me an email, mm -hmm. like many did, and you brought up the tax, property tax issue. Right. So I pulled your tax bills. Um, over three years, your tax has gone up $702.46. Now, you may have insurance that's escrowed or something. That, we don't escrow. And your county taxes, which this board represents, in the past three years gone up $129.32. Well, the current bill we just got was another $400 it's gone up. Yes, ma'am. Look at your bill and see what the mm -hmm. school board charges you. And oh, I know. This board charges you. Oh, and I understand that. The point I'm trying to make is that with... The inflation we have, we've been able to maintain the county tax bill uh, at the same millage rate, and there's 22,711 homes that's froze in value uh, that don't get an increase, even though their value goes up. Now, for school purposes, they do, but for county, you don't. Right. And, uh, <coughs> Just be a little more accurate when you send me numbers on your taxes, okay. please, because I take pride in maintaining our uh, financial security. Well, and I was speaking, I meant 
are over all taxes. Right. I know that y'all don't govern the school taxes. We don't. I, I or do the understand cities, that. Unfortunately. No, I do right. understand that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition? If not, I will ask the applicant to come up and uh, if they so choose and answer some of the opposition's concerns. Yes, sir. Um, Simon and I will kind of tag team here based on uh, the comments we heard. And I just want to uh, say thank you to the, the citizens that came out today and, and that are active in our community. Um, the Garrett family wants to be a, a, is a good citizen and is a local family and um, has made a substantial effort to reach out to folks and, and to educate them on this project. But I do want to thank them for coming. Um, you know, with that said, um, you know, change is challenging sometimes, it's emotional sometimes, but rezonings have to be based on the facts and the law. Um, and so, you know, based on what we've proposed, and I, well, I guess I can't go back on my slides. Um, this project will have a substantial positive impact on this county. It will have the potential of reducing the amount of waste going into landfills because it will be recycling and reusing materials that would otherwise go there. Um, it could also or will also reduce the smells um, being generated from the existing landfills because as I understand it, those smells are coming from the gypsum and sheetrock boards that get wet or, and are compressed in the landfill. And this operation will actually recycle that gypsum as it is dry and uh, reuse it for making sheetrock um, and not put it in the landfill. So I think there's uh, substantial positive impacts uh, from this project. Uh, one other is, um, you know, it reduces the truck traffic and trucks from Walton County that are collecting trash having to go to other counties and other transfer stations. So it should reduce um, pollution and emissions uh, based on the convenience of having it right here in our county and having it right next to the existing C&D landfill. There's significant synergies between those two. If a truck comes in, it can pull left instead of right and recycle versus just dumping something um, into a landfill. Uh, with that, I'd like to hit, and hit me anytime, time, um, Simon, if you want to jump in, um, just hit some of the concerns um, that were mentioned from um, the citizens. Uh, one of the reoccurring uh, concerns listed, again, is, is the odor, uh, which, you know, we understand, but we ask that you um, differentiate between the landfill operations that are there and this operation. It's a completely different operation. It's not a landfill. Waste is being cycled in and out. Um, it's being cleaned, and again, we've, um, you know, offered up additional bufferage um, that's not required in the ordinance, and we've offered up an additional condition um, to allow the county to monitor that and add additional requirements um, of the odor misters on my client if the county determines that that odor um, is an issue. Um, Additionally, you know, the, the noise, same thing. I've showed you the additional buffers, um, and the county has a great ordinance in place to help protect against that. Um, comments were made with regard to the retirement home. Um, there's no evidence whatsoever that that home was shut down as a result of this operation. It's been there alongside the existing C&D landfill. In fact, it's only 400 feet from the C&D landfill, and it would be 700 feet um, from this operation. Um, doesn't seem to have affected their ability to get residents and to take good care of their patients there. And my client has been in contact uh, with that property owner um, as well. Let's see, working down my list here. Um, fire service, I think that was um, adequately addressed, and the fire uh, marshal did look fire department did look over the application and didn't note any specific concerns uh, regarding our, um, our proposal. Property values, again, as mentioned, property values have actually been increasing. Um, a lot of these homes predated the, the C&D landfill, and while they do cite concerns about noise and odor from that landfill, um, they continue to live in these areas and the value continues to increase and neighborhoods continue to be built um, you know, while that landfill um, exists. And again, this operation um, is different and we put measures in place to protect the citizens uh, from any noise or odors coming from this particular operation. Uh, with that, did you have any that you wanted to hit on? Um, there's a couple things, yeah. Andrea talked about the uh, the odor from the landfills. You know, the landfills, the, the trash comes into the landfill and it stays there forever and ever, and you get you add more trash every day. 
And so the, it, it causes the odor to be a lot harder to manage than it is with our type operation here where we're bringing stuff in, we're processing it, and we're sending it back out. We're not accumulating more and more and more material over time. Now, in regard to the odor at the landfills, um, since we got a new ownership of the, the Carruthers Mill landfill, which is adjoining the Walton C&D landfill about three years ago, They've uh, made great strides in improving the odor out there, and the odor is much less than it was, than it once was. It's much improved. Um, they're still working on it, and they're still improving, and there's room to go. And Look, guys, there's not a person in this room let's, who let's doesn't generate address, trash. Address the board, please. There's not a person in this room who doesn't generate trash. And we're not here to be a nuisance to the community. We're here to provide a public service to the community. Everybody in this room generates trash. And there's getting to be more and more of us as time goes on. We're having kids. I don't know how many of you guys have kids, but I have three kids. I hope those kids have more kids and I have grandkids. And as the community grows and the population grows, we generate more trash. There's more people moving to Walton County and we have to make accommodations to handle it. If we don't get the infrastructure in place before it's too late, we're going to be stuck in a situation where we're going to be forced to stick some kind of facility somewhere where it's not the optimum place for it. We feel like this is an optimum place, and we're here to serve the community. We're pa this is our business. We're passionate about this, and we do a good job with it. Um, one gentleman mentioned uh, our trucks having to make a U-turn at Bradley Gin Road. I just wanted to correct the record on that. We do have access to enter our property off of the existing entrance with the landfill so that there would be no new entrance placed on 78. Our customers can come and go through an existing center median cut uh, at the landfill, at Walton C&D Landfill. So there would be no need for any trucks to make a U-turn at Bradley Gin. Um, in regard to the fire concern, we will have a, a fire plan and we will have a water supply on site to alleviate any issues with the fire. That is definitely a concern, but we will have a, a plan in place to, to account for that. Um, someone mentioned litter. I agree. I hate litter. It's one of my pet peeves. Uh, unfortunately, it's something that we can't control is, is the customers that do come into us. But what we do do is pick up the litter on the road on a weekly basis out in front of our facility. and. Uh, I'm sure I missed some things. If there's additional questions, I'd be happy to answer those, but those are the ones that I caught. Okay. okay. Uh, excuse me. This is not an open back and forth form. Uh, if you have a question, we'll let you address the board. Uh, but are you through with yours? I got one. Yes, sir. All right, one of the commissioners has a question. Uh, what's the estimate of the people trash in Walton County that comes and for other that comes from other places and what comes from Walton County? Um, I, I know that I checked, uh, for, there were some people that had commented about trash coming from Oconee County, so I checked for the, the Walton C and D landfill for the, the last report available for the first quarter of this year, and the amount of trash that came from Oconee County was about 12% of the waste that came in was from Oconee County. Oh. And if that's a concern that you have, one comment that I would have on that would be, you know, if that material is now going to the city of Mobile <coughs> Transfer Station, and if those customers decided to come to our facility instead of the Monroe Transfer Station, that would actually reduce the traffic on Highway 78, you know, that's currently going all the way to Monroe you know, it would just barely be coming into Walton County and then going right back and it wouldn't be uh, contributing to traffic in Walton County. I got a couple questions. Okay. Well, I got a few questions, Mr. Garrett. One is um, a lot of talk been about if you have to wash this pad down every day, correct? The, where the transfer station, you have to wash that down daily? Yes, sir. EPD requires that it be cleaned daily. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be washed with water. It has to be scraped. And uh, so we use the cutting edge on the bucket and we also use mattresses to kind of act as a <coughs> pad, the, like a W pad you wash dishes with. The mattress kind of acts the same way with the fabric on the mattress and we'll use a mattress to scrape the floors down. But that does have to be done on a daily basis, yes, sir. Right. Any water that's used on here, where does it go? Because, so. Um, Yes, sir, that's a great question. And uh, the water has to be collected. And uh, our goal would be to get approval from EPD to treat that on site. And if they're, if they're not able, not willing to approve us for that, then we would put a tank in and capture that water. And then we would have a, like a septic service come out and uh, pump that tank out and 
transport it to a wastewater treatment plant. Are you regulated by the state on how long stuff can stay on the site? Yes, sir. How long? It depends on the material. The recyclable materials, we have a little more leeway. Uh, the solid waste has to be moved out very promptly. Okay. Any medical supplies come into this site? Not that I know of. We just, we just want to take you know, non-hazardous garbage, non-hazardous trash. We don't want to take anything hazardous. Any further questions? I have a couple questions. Okay. Uh, a gentleman stated earlier about the enclosed, three size versus four size. Is four size an option? If not, why? Well, the, the three sided is generally what the state's looking for. You need good ingress and egress for the customer traffic, for the vehicle traffic in and out of the building. Uh, the vehicles have to come in and dump inside the building. Uh, you want them dumping on a concrete floor. You want a roof over your head. You want to keep it dry. Um, and, and so you, having that one side open gives you the ability to have good, safe ingress and egress. You may have multiple customers coming in and dumping at the same time, so uh, having that, that side open gives you that ability. And that one side would face which direction, that open side? Uh, we, we haven't got that far along in our plans yet. Uh, one of our neighbors had asked that it not face uh, toward their property, and so our thought was to either face it toward the, the existing Walton Sandy landfill or potentially face it toward Highway 78, but, but not face it toward, uh, I guess, the west, westerly direction or the, the other direction, I guess it would be northerly. Okay. And the turnaround time, what does the state require? What does promptly mean? 24 hours, 48 hours, 72, what does that require? Are you, you referring to the solid waste transfer? Yeah, solid waste transfer. So what they require is that the floor be cleaned daily. Every operating day, the entire floor has to be cleaned. And so what you would do is, uh, say for instance, you're dumping in one area in the morning while you're cleaning the area on the other part of the building. Then when you get that clean, you, you, the, the trucks start dumping over there and you start cleaning the other side. So the trash is constantly getting turned over and flipped out. It's going out on a daily basis. It's going out continuously. So it would be going out you know, at least every operating day. That's not to say there wouldn't be any trash that would stay overnight. Obviously, if you got trash that comes in right at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to get it all out with the operating hours, but it would go out first thing the next morning. Does that answer all your questions, Kirk? It does. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to ask you, do you have a, anything to tell how far it is from here to the Walton Clean and Beautiful side or the Cherry Hill side? Well, yeah, you can go on our tax assessor side. I pulled, uh, when I started getting emails from Bradley Jen subdivision, I wanted to see how far you were from the site, and then I checked the city of Monroe's uh, transfer station to see how far it was from this courthouse right here. It's one mile to the transfer station. Bradley Jen uh, subdivision is a little over one mile uh, from this. Uh, Walton Clean and Beautiful is just a hair over a mile from Monroe Golf and Country Club. Uh, that part, I just wanted to see for reference. Uh, all solid uh, waste in Walton County does not get buried in Walton County. Every solo cup, everything that we produce has to be transferred and it either goes to Bear County or Hull, Georgia, is my understanding. <laughs> it's where the two solid waste. So talking about another county bringing some C and D in here, we ship 100% of our solid waste out of Walton County. Um, and uh, we have no solid waste uh, landfill in Walton County. So just for fact's sake. Any other questions from the board? I have a couple, please. All right. Mr. Garrett, there, uh, I, I came over and met with y'all yesterday. Thank you for taking your time to sort of show me what you're wanting to do and how things come about. They, uh, I think your truck operation from like your, I guess, I think you mentioned it was commercial, but it still picks up household garbage on part of your roll off side, which is like the front load dumpsters or whatever they are. You're wanting to keep the trucks parked over in Oconee County, right? Like Our, in Oconee, like there at your, like where y'all live. Because I think you mentioned that you like to walk out your door and be able to go to work and pretty much everybody comes to one location in Oconee County and parks all your trucks, right? Yes, sir. Our office and our fleet maintenance facility is, is there. 
Okay, so just thinking about it, it's a question, not of anything else. If that's where all your trucks go every day and where it is, have you ever thought or considered? Because one thing you said, hey, I want to be able to work where I live. Walk out the door, go to work. Have you ever considered or looked at, you know, potentially proposing this there as well, right there where your trucks go back to every day and where you have a small recycling part to it now, right? We do. Recycle yeah, things. we operate a recycling yard there as well. So have you ever, like, looked, partitioned, you know, say Oconee County, there where you're at, to be able to have this there? We did. Yeah, we looked at that and, and we uh, applied for a material recovery facility there probably a little over 10 years ago. Um, ultimately, that effort failed. Uh, the thing about our location there is we're on a two-lane county road and one of the county requirements in their code, uh, we, the road didn't meet the requirement. So we, we weren't able to convince them to allow us to do it there. Another thing is there's a lot, of, lot, more, it's a lot more residential area there than, than this particular property that we're looking at here on Highway 78. Um, but the, the bigger key to what makes this successful is being co-located beside the landfill. So our goal is there's a lot of stuff that comes in the landfill that should be recycled, that, that shouldn't be buried. And right now that material is just every day it's going in the landfill and it's getting buried and it's taking up landfill space. So the key is for us to be co-located beside the landfill so that we can capture some of those loads and get them sorted and processed and a lot more of that material recycled rather than going into the landfill. That opportunity doesn't exist when you're located somewhere else. And is your plan to recycle some of the solid waste as well? Or the solid waste like when the household garbage comes in, do you plan on like busting the bags, cycling and sorting it and recycling it as well, is that the plan? No, sure. We're not busting any bags and going through any bags of, of household garbage. That's not the plan. Okay. Um, what happens is, is, is some loads that come in, if, they've, if we can easily identify that there's recyclable material, we'll send it to material recovery area, we'll sort it out there. If it's, uh, you know, if there's clearly no recycling opportunity, it'll go to the waste transfer and get dealt with there. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from the board? All right, is there was one question that was asked from the public uh, a little out of order, I think from the opposition, I'll give you a chance to come up and ask that question if you so feel. So, thank you. So we, we would hope that when we open for operation that we would be getting 50 customers a day. Um, that would be, be, be good to get started up and running. And then as uh, our customers learn our capacities and, and what we're able to offer and, and do for them, we would hope that that would grow to 150 to 200. And we anticipate that that would take around a three to a five year timeline for the learning curve. Uh, for the customers to learn our business and our capabilities and what we offer. And at that point, we, we feel like that would kind of kind of level out at that point. Um, it may grow a little year to year as the community grows, but um, not, not, nothing much more than that. Okay. But to, make, to make sure, just I, that made me think of something else when it comes. So would this be open to anything, anyone from anywhere to come here? Yes, it's my understanding that the U.S. Commerce Clause does not give us the ability to regulate where materials come to us. We have to be uh, free trade to to any you know anybody who who comes. Okay. I don't think we have any any authority to to dictate where where materials come from. That would be a violation of the Commerce Clause, is my understanding. Okay. Okay. Any other questions from the commissioners? One quick question. So, how many bigger trucks would be? Will just add to the to the road because you got to transfer this out to landfills. How many larger tractor trailer, fifth three foot trailer, would this add to the traffic? Um, I would say probably. I'd say when we when we get first get started, I would probably say five to seven a day, and then when we get to capacity, I would probably say around twenty to twenty five a day. And they would turn right out of your site and go to Winder, or t and then or go to Hull, or where would they go? Yes, sir. So that's a good question. At this point, the closest uh, landfill that we can deliver the material to is in Winder. So we would take a left on 78, we would take a left on 53, and we would take a left on 316 and go up to their facility, which is right off of 316. Uh, after that landfill reaches capacity, uh, the next closest, there's one in Buford, um, and we would take a similar route 
out of our facility. I'm not exactly sure how we would get there, but we'd be making a left. And then the next one after that would be in Homer, and we would also be making a left. So, so those, those, to your point, the trucks would be on the Highway 78 in Walton County a very short distance. Okay. Mr. Garrett, do you or your family like have any interest in any commercial dump and so forth, like ownership interest in any commercial dump? We do in Walton C&D, yes, sir. Okay. Okay, any other questions from the board? We got one gentleman standing up. I'm going to have to uh, end this public meeting. I think most of the questions have been asked, but go ahead and ask your question, Mr. Mailer. Thank you. Uh, I think any other questions from the board? I think I'm going to close the public hearing. Um, Did you want me to? No. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, we have a long agenda tonight, and I think most of the questions, and I'll entertain. Now, we have to do two separate votes, so we'll start with 4-2, conservation to Highway Corridor. Uh, <laughs> will be the first uh, motion, entertain a motion from the board. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, I feel this is more of a residential area and so forth, and with that being said, I would make a recommendation to deny that. Second. And we have a motion to deny and a second from Commissioner Bradford. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Let's see a hand show. One, two, three. <laughs> All those opposed? No. Say aye. Motion does not carry to deny. On approval of conditions, rezone 27.42, well, we need to go back on the 4-2 and see if there's a motion to go the other way to approve it. It was, was it I'll make that motion. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Four to three. Motion carries. Approval with conditions on the rezone 4.3. Entertain a motion on it. I'd like to make a motion to deny. Second. We have a motion to deny from Commissioner Bradford, a second from Commissioner Adams. Yes, sir. And all those in favor of that motion, say aye and show your hands. Aye. Uh -huh. We have three again. Those opposed? No. Show your hands, please. There's four. That motion does not carry. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve uh, with these conditions. Second. Wait a minute, let me read the conditions. Composting facility operates hours will be seven to five, uh, Monday through Saturday. No grinding or crushing operations take place out of normal business hours. Solid waste to be stored, sorted inside of buildings. No outside storage of solid waste whatsoever. And to help mitigate OSHA, uh, odor issues, planning and de development will make monthly inspections. Any deficiencies or shortcomings will be reported to the EPD. Uh, must install a misting system with deodorants to mask or neutralize odors. Install ventilation systems with air filters or scrubbers and plant vegetative barriers such as trees to absorb or disperse odors where no existing vegetation buffer exists. The 73.70 acres will remain A1 as a perpetual buffer for noise 
visible for screening, no activity will occur in the 73.7 acres, including timber harvesting other than agricultural uh, cutting hay or growing cows. As motion to approve with that, and I need a second. Second. We have a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Show of hands. All those opposed. Aye. Aye. Show of hands. It passes four to three. I'll make a statement. I've looked at all this. There's no better place. Even an industrial park is not as good as right next to a landfill for sorting and recycling uh, waste. It's on Highway 78, which is our commercial corridor through the county. Businesses will locate on 78. Um, they have their already entrance there. There'll now be a new entrance. And I went to three of these facilities, and there was not one bit of odor in any of them. And Walton County's clean and beautiful was the most cleanest and most neatest. And we're recycling glass, paper, plastic, saving the environment. And the people in Bradley Gen bought in 2007, 2008. The, the mountain was there. Kevin's mountain was there and growing. Yes, it was. It was permitted in 2003, and they were grading before then. Um, I don't like it. I don't like the smell. They're working on the smell, but that's a different issue than this issue here. I don't know how long it takes, but I drive up and down the road every day. I don't. There's also a voice of the business owners and property owners, too. We're not going to get an argument with that. We're going to go on with 4.4. Four. I made a lot of friends. This the end. Yeah, but they spoke during oh, okay. that right there. And the other guy that spoke the public comment told against that too, but he didn't get up and speak. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is very disappointing for the people. I apologize. Can we call their name? They're not going to be here. Well, where is a better place to put it? Where is a better place to put it? Well, I know it wasn't for y'all and it wasn't for Mila. I like it. I like a good picture. You do whatever you need to do. We're going to take a five minute recess and allow things to calm down.
one to B3 to be combined with property next to the property that's already zoned B3 recently. Um, and this would create a single entrance off of Tommy Dillard Road. The applicant is Cattle Barn LLC in care of Dillard Sellers. And the property owner is Herbert Price, property located at 30, 3351 Tommy Dillard Road. This is in District 4. Um, Jeff Haymore was the attorney that represented at the Planning Commission. They want to rezone this 1.05 acres to add it to the previously rezoned property to be three. Um, there were, was no one there in opposition and the Planning Commission recommended approval unanimously. Okay, thank you. I'll open public hearing and if the applicant is here. Look like Joe Biden. <laughs> he almost failed. Yeah. I, I almost did. <laughs> need a lawyer here or something to represent me now. Uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, good evening, Chairman, members of the Commission. My name is Jeff Haymore. Uh, I'm a land use attorney with the law firm of Dillard Sellers. 1776 Peachtree Street uh, is our address. I've passed out just a few photos there of uh, Bill's business, which is called First Environmental. And uh, what they do is they go around the state and they perform environmental cleaning services at their customers' locations. So this, these are locations. This is not the subject property. The subject property is simply where they're going to have their, uh, their business, where all they're going to do is store their, their equipment and their trucks there and an office for uh, any office employees. But basically, they come to this site uh, in the morning, pick up their trucks, and go off to the jobs, and then and then come home in the evenings or in the following days, depending on the size of the job. Uh, as you know, the, the property here with the with the timber was rezoned by this board to B three for Mr. Hartley's business. Uh, subsequent to that, Mr. Uh, Price, who owns the subject property, approached Mr. Hartley about acquiring it, and so Mr. Hartley um, agreed to that. And so what this would do is bring uniform zoning to the to this area. It's all B3 uh, to the to the east right there. It's consistent with uh, the, the the highway quarter character area. And as uh, as Charna said, there's no opposition as well as unanimous support from uh, the planning commission. And so with that, I ask for your vote and here to answer any questions that you have. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else here who'd like to speak in favor of this? Is there anyone here in opposition like to speak? Thought you were fixing to jump up. <laughs> All right. Uh, seeing none, uh, I will close the public hearing and ask the board their uh, wishes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve with the one condition of no storage of hazardous materials or chemicals on site as we did on the previous one. Is that okay? Are you good with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right, we have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. Thank you. Okay, 4.5. This is an amendment to the Walton County Land Development Ordinance. Yes, sir. Um, okay. Okay, there's three different amendments here. The first one is to amend Article 6 to delete private drive. The reason we're deleting private drive is a, a private drive subdivision, <clears throat> as it now is in the ordinance, has to be five acre lots. Um, the road has to be paved. Um, you can have no more than 15 lots. Recently, the board approved an open ditch subdivision with two acre minimum, so this is just- There's no need to have it anymore. Correct, longer. right, yes sir. Okay, and then errata number two is, um, so this is an administrative kind of uh, correction here or adding to the ordinance to give us more teeth. Um, this is an amendment as it relates to residential dwellings and this will be amended in every district to um, add that uh, we require builders to grade all the single family lots that have topographical issues that the slopes are no more than three to one and that's just putting this requirement in the ordinance. 
And that's that's good. That yes, way sir. somebody doesn't walk out the back door and tumble and, to the street. Right. So this next one is up for discussion, actually, for the board. Um, this would be an amendment to A, which is not A1, A2, just A. A is what we consider the commercial agricultural zoning for the county. Right now, it requires a minimum five acre lot. It allows an 1,100 square foot house. Um, we're proposing that the board consider changing this to either like a two acre minimum or a three acre minimum. We've had a lot of people, um, you know, they want to do uh, like bees, keep bees or organic farming or something like that. They don't have five acres. You know, they're not allowed to apply for that. Um, so that is just something, you know, for the board mm. to consider if, and as a part of this, we would go ahead and raise the house size to 1400 so that it's the same as A1 and A2. What, what would prevent a developer to do a two acre subdivision in an A with 1400 square foot minimum houses? The uh, allowance for that type of development is an A1 and A2. It's not an A. Yeah, I know we kept the eight and the smaller square footage, so if some retired couple wanted to build just, they don't want 2,000 square feet. They, mm -hmm. It's 1,100 and it's five acres. We're, we're fine with leaving it like it is on this particular errata, number three, um, but it was just something that we had said we would bring before the board. Well, we have our appeals board if there's a particular issue comes up and someone wants to vary from the five acres in an A, can they do it through Not appeals? Through the they can't? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was asking yeah, questions. Exactly. That's why we have brought it here. Um, you know, it could be a three acre minimum, four acre minimum. Um, <clears throat> I did want you to have to, you know, to think about this. Uh, one thing to consider in changing this guideline is that um, commercial agriculture uses are sometimes better suited for a larger lot. One example of that is the commercial, I mean a kennel. You know, a commercial kennel can be on two acres, but a kennel out in the county has to be five acres because it has to be zoned A. Um, our bed and breakfast got, not bed and breakfast, Airbnb guidelines require an A zoning, which is five acres. So that's why I'm telling you this, you may want to leave it just as it is and um, just approve the other two and leave this one. But um, we did, you know, let some citizens know that we would at least get the board to consider dropping the acreage in the A zoning. Mr. Chairman, could we table number three till next month? I think that's a good idea. Okay. I need to make that a motion and I, true. I make a motion we table number three till. And approve one and two. We need to have a and approve one and two. Yes. Sir. Oh, we need to have a public hearing on this. Sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Council. I suspect you'll have much of one, but you need to keep, keep me straight. Thank you, sir. All right, we'll open up a public hearing on one and two. We're going to uh, number three postpone to a later board meeting. Is anyone here? Uh, if you want to, if you want to have the public hearing on three and then table the vote, you're welcome to do. All right, we'll have public hearing on one, two, and three. I would rather we table the public hearing and the vote to, to next month to allow people to think about it because people may not have known about it. So I would make a motion that we approve. We're not, a, I guess, we're opening public discussion for one and two and then table three. I would, I would suggest you have it all, for all of it if they want to talk about that one and then you can have it again next month. Okay, so they can, we can reopen again next month, what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Okay. Is there anyone here who wants to speak in favor of... Uh, Errata one or errata two? Or three. At three. And errata three. Does anyone here want to speak against these three? This is a waste of time. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm going to close the public hearing. And it, I'm going to close the public hearing with no comment made and entertain a motion to approve one and two, and table number three. So moved. You got a motion? Second. We have a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? 
that passes. And now we have planning and development again, 5.1. Yes, sir. Okay, this is um, an alteration to zoning, so this did not go before the Planning Commission, but this is a request to allow um, access from Malin Smith Road on a prior rezone where the property was rezoned um, right there at the corner of Highway 11 and Malin Smith Road. The property was rezoned with conditions that um, the access come off of Highway 11 only. I think there was one more condition that's not written on here. Anyway, we have a letter from DOT. They feel that it would be better for this access to come off of Malin Smith. So um, the conditions were realign Malin Smith Road to allow ingress, egress from Highway 11 only. Uh, number two was no commercial storage allowed. Number three was an eight foot high screen solid fence around the perimeter. Um, number four was the vegetative screener screen on property adjacent to A1, and um, condition five was an additional 100-foot buffer along the rear property abutting parcel C140, parcel 90, with site lighting as requested. Um, the applicant is requesting the zoning condition only on number one, which is the access off of Highway 11, mm. to allow access off of Malin Smith. Okay. Uh, we'll open a public hearing on this and ask if the applicant or their representative come and uh, tell us where we're at and what's going on. <coughs> Good evening. I'm John Brewer. I'm here on behalf of Mr. Atha. Uh, this project or this property has been back and forth uh, several different times over the course of about the last year and a half. Uh, what we're trying to accomplish here now is to have a storage facility at very first I believe it was uh, being planned as a truck parking facility which that is no longer in the picture we're uh, wanting to do a storage facility and to enter in and off of Malin Smith Road due to the lack of road frontage for our property number one but also just the ingress and egress to the property will be so much easier in the letter that we do have the DOT we give them a mock traffic study for the amount of units that we think are going to that, that will end up occupying the site. You're looking between eight and ten cars a day, and that's going to be on a high end estimate. So what we're asking for is to be able to access our property off Malin Smith Road. Okay. Any questions from the board? All right. Thank you, John. Is anyone else here in favor of this that would like to? Uh, make a statement. Is there anyone here in opposition to this that would like to make a statement? Good afternoon. My name is Jacob Calloway. I currently reside on Malin Smith Road. Uh, I've spoken with about 20 different residences in the area and speak for the majority of them. Um, we speak together, and we all have the same desire and goals for this situation. Um, you have to know a little bit of my background so you can understand where I'm coming from. I'm a law enforcement officer by trade. For five years, I specialized in crash reconstruction, accident reconstruction, scene evaluations, and fatality accident investigations. So when I evaluate a scene or a roadway, my measurements and mathematics are considered scientifically proven in court. Malin Smith Road holds two nine-foot lanes from outside yellow line to outside white line with no shoulder. Less than one inch of a shoulder is clarified as no shoulder. The drop off along the side of Malin Smith Road ranges from a one foot drop at a one foot distance, which means you're traveling one foot down as you move one foot away from the roadway, up to a four foot drop at two foot away from the roadway. An increase in traffic in this area with the way the roadway is built is not satisfactory. When you're talking about bringing in 10 to 12 cars, you're talking about bringing in U-Haul trucks that are moving into a storage facility, trucks towing trailers. A nine-foot lane is barely large enough to be legal for a school bus to pass through. A U-Haul truck is eight foot six inches wide, not counting its mirrors. Two of them passing each other on a roadway and front yards where children play is inevitably going to lead to a serious injury accident. That is from my expert opinion as an expert crash investigator with over 2,000 hours of crash training. I've worked over 1,000 fatality accidents, and I have all the documentation to prove it if you would like. And where do you live, Jacob? I live on Malin Smith Road, 2910 Malin Smith Road, sir. On this road, on Malin Smith Road? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. 
At this point in time, sir, I have not had a chance to review the DOT study that was requested or to see it. I would like to see that if that's possible. I would also request that this decision be tabled and a new DOT study be conducted to see about the closure of Malin Smith Road at the railroad tracks. And it is my current understanding that the triangle parcel that is on the other side of Malin Smith Road from this parcel is also a piece of that property. It's not currently highlighted in blue, but if you look just further south on Highway 11, there's a small triangle piece between the railroad tracks and the roadway. My understanding is that is attached to this parcel and it was cut that way when the easement was given for Malin Smith Road. Currently, the closest residents to that roadway, um, I've spoken with those <laughs> residences, they're about 700, about 600 feet from their driveway to Lemons Road, which would be a school bus stop pickup, so the school buses would not be affected. Closing the roadway would only affect two properties at that location. One of them is here tonight, and I've spoken with them. They said they're okay with it as long as it's done appropriately. Um, the other property that's there has no residents on it currently. So I would request that it be tabled until next month and a proper DOT evaluation done if Malin Smith Road was closed, if an access on Highway 11 could be accessed. All right. Any questions from the board? There, uh, Chip, Shorna, there, uh, can y'all help allow for some light here for us? The question would be, so would it, number one, can we close Malin Smith Road and what's the process for doing so? And when I say close Malin Smith Road, close it on this side of the railroad tracks. You see what I'm saying? Like when you turn off a of Highway 11 on Malin Smith Road, they're well, that the eighth of properties right there on the right. And I believe both of those are prescriptive easements that we have for that portion of Malin Smith Road. This property right here in the corner that he was referring to is not a part of that? No, I understand, but like oh, okay. as far as the what would be the process if the board so decided to close that portion of Malin Smith Road? Because to my understanding, it's only prescriptive easements on each side, that, which means the county maintains it, but we have a prescriptive easement. I'm not sure that the, whether the type of easement, I'm not sure is necessarily relevant. I, I assume that, that it would be a, I haven't looked at it since first I've heard of this, but, um, you typically, it's a, I think it would be the standard for road abandonment, which you would have to determine that there's no public purpose um, to have the road. Sure. Um, but there may be there may be some other legal questions that come into that. But that's off the cuff. That's uh, that's generally the standard for when you close the road in the past or abandon the road. It's if you make a determination that it doesn't serve a public purpose. Right. So, which would be only for the portion. I'm not mentioning like the process for closing all of Malin Smith Road, just the portion from Highway 11 to the railroad tracks, which there's only two property owners right there on that in that area. So, you would close the road to deny access to that property? No, not to deny access to the property. The residents down the road to keep from anything coming down through there, they were asking, could we say, cause you got Lemons Road that comes in. Right. You got Malin Smith that comes in on the other side. So it's a, it's a simple thoroughfare going through there, but to make it more simplistic, to keep the people coming to the, the, uh, the facility there, just coming in, coming out right there in one area. Well, this, this particular property right here, they, that's the only frontage they have, is that little piece right there on Malin Smith. But no, they would be, like, they would be part of that. Like, as far as, like... Oh, I meant that piece of property right there that I'm... Oh, I see what you're saying. The yeah. straight line is just mm -hmm. Yeah. The, yes, it is. Yeah. The well, no, that says, yeah, Malin no Smith. Okay. Well, it still would make it a... Okay, thank you. Anyone else in opposition to this request would like to speak? Seeing none, I'll give the applicant a chance to rebut uh, the opposition. I would simply say that I would think it would be best to ask the 
opposition if they would be in favor of just closing the road right there at the railroad right of way. That to me would block them off. I mean, so they would have to come in way down here on the other end of Malin Smith and back around Lemons and get back to what? The dead end of the railroad track? This don't make much sense, but you, the, the people in opposition may had rather have that. Um, one of the things that we have or would be willing to agree to do is to on our on the storage facility, uh, we would be willing to have a, a stipulation that we would only have a left in, a left out and a right in. So the traffic would be coming off of 11 into and out of back to 11 and not to the right on Malin Smith that crosses over the track and goes through the country out there. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any questions from the board before I close the public hearing? I'll close the public hearing and ask the board's uh, wishes. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to for the for their request in the zoning condition, the entrance on Highway 11 to be changed to allow access from Malin Smith. I would make a motion to allow access from Malin Smith with a commercial entrance, the right turn in, left turn out only, as is agreeable by the applicant. Okay. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. Okay, we have adoption resolution capital improvements element annual update. Mr. Chairman, before we get, could we look into potentially like figure out what it would take to close going forward that section of Malin Smith and just figure if there's public interest or no? We can, okay we'd enough. probably have to advertise that and get public comment and, and everything. And I'm not opposed to getting public comment. Okay. Uh, we've had plenty of that tonight. Okay. Yes, sir. This is for the um, annual update of the uh, impact fee program. Right. The um, update was has been sent to the DCA. We are awaiting approval, so we want to ask the board if they would adopt this pending DCA approval. At the time that DCA approves it, we would that would allow you, Chairman, to sign it on that date. You know, and um, have this done before. That way, the we don't lose any impact fees for and a couple any, months. Yes, while we Yes, sir. Entertain a motion to do so, that. So moved. We got a motion. Need a, we got a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. Finance. Finally. <laughs> We got resolution of adopting, adoption of the fiscal 24 year budget. Good afternoon, I'm Misty McGraw, I'm the Assistant Finance Director. The first resolution that we have tonight is adoption of the FY24 budget. Okay, is there any questions about the fiscal 24 year budget? We have had budget hearings and yes. we have had meetings and uh, it's time to adopt it so we can put it into place come July the 1st. Yes. Is this the question I have about, does this budget put two firemen in every station? This budget should finalize the final hiring of the last seven or six or? 10. Ten. There's 24 total. Okay. 24, yeah. Uh, this should finalize and and have that. We've been working on that now. This is the third year. Mm -hmm. I, I saw your assistant chief tonight come rolling in in a brand new fire engine. I feel confident we can fill the bill. <laughs> have y'all got it outside for us to look at? Maybe if we get through by midnight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions on the budget? No, right. <laughs> no. Entertain a motion to adopt the fiscal year 24 budget. I make a motion to approve. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion or questions? If not, I call a question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
passes unanimous. Right. Resolution authorizing the chairman to amend the 23 budget as part of the fiscal year closing process. Make a motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. A second. We have a second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Resolution, fiscal year 23, budget amendments. Yes, we have a few. The first two are um, grants for EMS, the first one being the UPL grant, and the second one being a trauma grant. So that's a additional income coming in that we it didn't is. budget it's for. It's neither an income. I love those. Do you want to pass them individually or all together? <laughs> all again. All together? Okay. So they're all passed? Okay. Oh. oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, tell us about all of them. All right. Yeah, I'll tell you about all of them. All right. The other one, um, the next one is for water, and it is um, moving funds in between budget or accounts. Um, okay. Moving, yeah. So it's neither uh, increase or decrease. All right. The, the funds we're moving is... Yes, you're moving... Um, Equipment to vehicles. Okay. And you're moving um, thirty-one thousand or twenty-six thousand. Sorry. All right. Step on over that. Any questions? This is year in cleaning up. We yeah, got it's just the additional grant up. money yeah. coming in. I have one question. question. All right. When it comes to the vehicle purchase that's on here which I'm fine with, are we moving, is this part of the process that this is gonna be one of the owned vehicles versus one of the leased vehicles? In which department are you? In water, underwater 446. Yeah, yes. the water department, we haven't started leasing vehicles yet. Mm -hmm. they, okay. They're enterprise fund and we're leasing the general fleet. No, I get it, right I just now. know that was a lot of discussion. I was just trying to Okay. all right. All right, and the last um, resolution or budget amendment is for SPLOST 4. Um, the Judicial Council of Georgia is donating $31,132 to reimburse us for an x-ray scanner in our government building. Well, all good news. So. Entertain a motion to approve these budget amendments. Motion to approve. We got a motion. Second. 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 <clears throat> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Passes unanimous. All right. Good Thank on. you. Thank you. Okay, finally to seven, acceptance of bids and proposals. The award to guarantee maximum price for the critical trade contractor packages and long lead material procurement for the Walton County Public Safety Complex. Megan? You got the show. Great, thank you. Good evening, uh, Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, we're here to recommend approval of the second component package for the Walton County Public Safety Complex in the amount of $57,811,001. Uh, as you may recall, the first package was uh, for limited release of the precast structure, detention equipment, and security electronics and electrical scope. This package builds on that and also includes concrete and earthwork, uh, as well as, uh, again, additional uh, releases related to those trades. Uh, these scopes were competitively bid. Execution of this package allows us to continue with procurement of long lead items and start the site work while the design is finalized. And also Please repeat that amount again, 57 million. <laughs> 57 million, 811,001 dollar. I don't know why we needed that extra dollar. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. That's right. All right, this is a lot of the uh, <coughs> stuff that is 12, 13, 14 months out, some of it that Correct. we have to get on the ball to get this going. And CPS has bid, and uh, this is within our budget that we're working with and uh, entertain a motion to move forward with this. Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve from Commissioner Banks. Second. Got a second from Commissioner Shellnut. Uh, any further discussion, questions? All those in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Abstention. We got two abstaining. Dr. Adams, did you vote aye? Yes, sir, I did. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, uh, you have your consent agenda, uh, which covers just about everything. There's an M8 housing agreement in there with Bear County. We're having to house now, not only in Oglethorpe, but Bear County, uh, our overflow. Um, any questions? If not, I entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I make a motion to approve. Second. You have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimous. Emergency management, a debris management plan. Or you want to tell us if we have a tornado and stuff, where's all the trash going? I think y'all approved a little while ago. Because they, uh, <laughs> they don't want it to go Highway 78 in the landfill. So. Good evening. Um, so this plan is just, it's just, it's just a typical plan. Basically what happens if the county doesn't have a plan in place uh, for tornado debris, a lot of times that debris gets mixed up and we got to separate it and the federal government will not give you any money if it's not done according to plan. So that is what this plan does. It just spells out how the county is going to function around that. Basically it puts all the weight on John and his department as, as whatever he says goes pretty much. <coughs> if we don't have this plan, then we got to go by FEMA's plan. I understand. All right. Motion to approve. Yeah, motion to approve. Second. We have a second. Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Passes unanimous. Okay, we have some appointments to make. In the Board of Elections, it's uh, requested that we reappoint Laurie Wood and Henry Ivey to the Board of Elections. Uh, anyone have any comments or would like to make a motion to do that? We can move forward. I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. Walnut Grove Library Board request to appoint Claudia Anderson, Dean Bossy, thank you, and Donald <coughs> Cannon, and Cheryl Rainey. Uh, motion to approve. We got a motion to approve. Second. We got a second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. Monroe, Walton, Library Board, request to reappoint Susan Blair. Motion to approve. We got a motion. Second. We got a second. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. Finally, the town of Between, uh, property at Ayers Park. The mayor Post would like to speak to the board uh, and good evening chairman and commissioners um sharna could you pull up that on the map that parcel sure, yeah. go ahead robert she can pull it up while you talking okay uh in 2021 uh the town of between approached the then chairman little and uh, about acquiring a piece of property on Heritage Parkway for the construction of a new town hall for the town of Between. The current town hall is over 60 years old, doesn't meet any handicap requirements. It needs some major, major work. Uh, also, it has no offices. So everybody, my office is in my home. The uh, commission, or councilmen uh, operate out of their home also. Um, we, through the uh, chairman and the uh, commission, they agreed to donate a one acre parcel of property to the town for the purpose of building a new town hall. We put an RFP together and put it out for bid, uh, but 
at that time due to the escalating uh, inflation, supply chain issues, and the rapid rise in building material costs at the time, uh, the bids were solicited. It became obvious that the project costs had far exceeded the available funds. Since that time, the council's made the decision to build the new town hall on the existing property location, thus eliminating a lot of the development costs that uh, raw land would have had. Um, we were talking about it, decide uh, what, what we could do with that land. Um, there was some discussion about, well, could we sell that property? And I said, no, we're not gonna sell that property. The county donated it to us. I, I don't think that's very ethical to, to uh, turn around and make a profit on, on a donation. So I, I contacted the, uh, Jody Johnson, the parks director, to ascertain what was going, uh, additional facilities were gonna be added at Ayers Park. And he said that they're pretty much landlocked as far as what can be done. There's some improvements to the Frisbee golf and things like that. But um, I said, well, what, what do you need? Said, right now they have four pickleball courts. And as you all know, pickleball has become the new uh, fantastic sport. Everybody and their brother is playing it. Uh, most of my council members play constantly. And I hear about it all the time. Um, so they said, well, why couldn't we approach the, the commission and ask about if we were able to donate that property back, deed it back to the county, whether uh, they would utilize, could utilize that land to add additional pickleball courts to Ayers Park. The property is right next to the existing pickleball courts. A lot of the infrastructure is already in there. The, the wiring for lighting for later on, a second phase of it is already there. Um, when, we, uh, when the park was done, they didn't uh, do the driveway or the curbing at that end of the park, uh, the 78 side of the park. So it uh, was ready to go for adding additional parking in that along that side. Um, so the board, uh, the council, uh, authorized made a, make a proposal to the commission that we would redeed the property back to the county for the express purpose of adding additional pickleball courts into that Ayers Park area. Um, one of the issues that is right now is the, you can't hold sanctioned pickleball courts that have entrance fees uh, with just four courts. You need 10 to 12, 14 courts in there. And that land there would allow for the construction of additional pickleball courts. Um, the, like I said, the wiring for future lighting is already there. Uh, all that we're asking and the, and the council agreed that if the board would commit to this project uh, and uh, that we would do the, uh, donation or redeeding of the property back to the county. Uh, the only thing that they asked about, and I said I'll ask, is that if we, if we're, this was able to be done, that some type of signage in there would, could be installed that said uh, basically the pickleball, uh, between pickleball complex at Ayers Park. Uh, also as part of the, the project and the proposal, the t uh, currently, the pickleball court now has no uh, seating, no bleachers, anything else for people to wait while their turn to play. Uh, the town would be uh, willing to purchase bleachers for each of the new pickleball courts. Uh, they're three-tier bleachers, nothing that people fall off and break their neck or something, uh, and they're eight foot long. So there would be one, at each, one set at each pickleball court. Uh, one of the interesting things about, on Memorial Day, I went over to the pickleball courts there at Ayers Park to see how uh, the utilization was being done. There was teams playing on the courts that are currently there. There were 36 people waiting to play that morning, and that's at nine o'clock in the morning. And I asked a lot of people about where they're coming from. Uh, there was a whole group of like six or eight from Oconee County, from Lake Oconee area down there, that drove all the way up to use those pickleball courts, uh, and then all over all over the county, uh, for Walton County, 
Uh, we so, need to charge then, don't we? Uh, hey, it's, it's, it's y'all's park. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, get, we'll donate the land if you do that. Well, it's my, mighty good of you donating land that we gave you yeah. to begin with, yeah. you know, yeah. with strings this yeah. time coming back. Uh, the other side of it is that, you know, I tell you, technically, there's nothing in the quick claim deed that restricts me from. There was not. There was no. no there was no clawbacks, and uh, let's let's don't create no turf war no, right here. No, definitely, <laughs> not. Uh, definitely. Definitely. Not. What what we can do, uh, it, we can start the process of getting it back, and I'll start precision planning, looking at to see what we can do with it. It's a weird shaped track. You see the yeah. indention there. Mm -hmm. I can see how the parking can come down, <clears throat> but at the most just eyesight and it, four more pickleball courts would be about it on that track. One, one of the things that uh, notice is most of the people are playing in the evening or on the weekends. And with the DMV parking across the street and that big parking lot next to the DMV, there's parking there. Uh, Utilize their parking. People are something. using that. We'll get, we'll get them to look at it and see how it engineers out. Okay. All right. Is that okay with the board? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Are you thinking about donating padded seating or just the hard like metal bleachers if we go forward with this? Uh, the, Don't start. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Clinton. All right. We, we, you approve it. I, I think tell you. we'll we'll move forward on it, right. and I think we can get a few more pickleball courts up there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Right. Chair. And it was omitted on discussion, but uh, we always have manager's report from uh, John. Okay. So, John, you can take it over. All right, I'll, I've got a update on several highlights, but I'll start off um, at the last meeting. I was uh, requested to look into the uh, board's consideration regarding the uh, required right of way and pavement width in residential subdivision. <coughs> um, I passed out a paper for you to look over. Option one is to maintain the current guidelines that were previously adopted, which is a 60 foot right of way with 24 <coughs> foot pavement. Um, the second option is go back to the original guidelines, which are 50 foot right of way with 20 foot of pavement. And there's a third option to amend the guidelines to allow local roads to be 50 feet with 20 feet of pavement and residential subdivisions, as well as add regulations for local roads within subdivisions serviced by sewer to have a minimum of 60 foot uh, right of way and 24 feet of pavement. So option three would be your um, uh, option that would actually have uh, both blended together into a hybrid. Um, so I wanted to bring those three options back to the uh, commission for their consideration. Any questions from John? So option three is one you're recommending? Yes, sir. But you may want to check with fire chief on, uh, on that. <coughs> Uh, well, let's get comments from the fire chief and then, I mean, this would be going back to the way we were. 24-foot um, pavement, 20 years from now, Walton County is going to be resurfacing that extra four foot of pavement uh, in these subdivisions. I understand the concern for fire safety where there's high density. Uh, where there's sewer and there's small lots and streets can get parked, blocked by people parking in the streets. But our subdivisions don't have that problem because we're one house per acre in the county. And um, I'd like to see it personally go back to the 50 foot right away and 20 foot pavement. Uh, but we have changed it right now to 60 foot right away and 24 foot pavement, which uh, is, you know, just more for us to upkeep later on. And you got a 20 foot road service in a subdivision and you're making <coughs> them put in a 24 foot road, even though you're serviced by a 20 foot road. 
And uh, do we need to take action on this tonight, Council, or we can? You're going to have to go to make a change like that. Have we have to get comments from. Go through the whole advertisement process, similar to what we did uh, with the. Add it to the map. Yeah. Okay. So it's, you can say you want to. We can start the process. How does the board feel about starting the process and getting comments and public comment? I think we ought to start. The process. I said, go ahead. Yeah, good idea. All right. Well, let's uh, vote to start the process. Entertain a motion to start the process on option three. I'll make that motion. All right. We need a second. Second. All those, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Oppose? John, you got some more reports? I do. I'm going to cover them as quickly as I possibly can. Um, Public Works has completed Elmig and Sploss resurfacing of Hodges Road, um, Piney Grove Road, Sandy Creek Road, and Thompson Road. They've also, through the service delivery uh, agreement, completed East Ash Street, Cannon Drive, East and West Cedar Street and Social Circle, and Hodges Road in Loganville. Um, good news out of 911 is that we have a wave of three new hires for uh, dispatchers in 911 starting uh, next week. Um, since April 4th, uh, we've collected um, right around 600 mattresses at the recycling center. Um, the program was obviously needed and is being heavily used, and all mattresses collected are being uh, recycled. Um, HNR and I have been working with uh, One to One Health on the setup and operation of the employee health clinic and the completion is expected to be uh, in June and we will be reaching out to everybody concerning that ribbon cutting coming up. Uh, we now have 78,894 registered voters and elections is working on redistricting social circle. Uh, FIRE is monitoring the construction of seven, uh, station number seven in Good Hope which is actually um, ahead of schedule. And uh, we've just received one of two new fire engines that have been ordered. This new engine will be uh, stationed at station number four. Um, we now have 17,347 water customers. Usage is increasing uh, with heat. And um, we, were, we hit our uh, high for the year uh, over the Memorial Day weekend. And I wanted to bring to your attention DOT projects. This is an issue both for ACCG as well as uh, GMA. And it's because DOT projects have the potential for a significant impact to the Water Department Enterprise Fund because we're required to move our infrastructure out of the way and relocate it when a DOT project is proposed. Um, DOT projects to upgrade roads, um, continue to uh, put that pressure on the department. Azura Church Road at Highway 81 has an anticipated cost of 1.2 million just to relocate water lines. Highway 138 at Highway 81 has a potential of 1.4 million. And most significant, Highway uh, 20 south of Loganville, they have planned several different uh, interchange relocations at a cost to relocate our lines at 3.5 million. That would put us at 6.5 million or more needed for DOT projects just in the next year. Um, in, out of planning, in May, we had 98 single family residential permits issued, which was quite the number. Um, so with all those different things going on, everything's going great, but obviously everything's very, very busy. And um, that concludes my report for you tonight. Thank you. Any questions from John? All right, we had three people sign up to make public comment. I think they were made during the rezoning, but I still have to call. Is Jeff Dibling here and would like to make his public comment? Ed Lehman, I know Ed was here and spoke and Laura Prescott. Laura was the one I corrected her on her property tax bill. But uh, all right, seeing none of those here, 
Are there any announcements by any of the board members? There's no need for an executive session. Entertain a motion that we've all been looking forward to adjourn. So moved. The second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Chairman, I want everybody to come to our open house Friday. Huh? I said I want everybody to come to our ribbon cutting on Friday. We have